I'm Peter Block here at ACC 17 in Washington, D.C. With me is Magnus Oman, an old friend from Duke. And Magnus uh, has just reported on the Gemini trial, a phase two trial, not a randomized, you know, this is the end of the world trial, but an important trial. So Magnus, tell me about Gemini first what it is, and then uh, we'll talk about what this may mean going forward. So Gemini was a phase two trial, as you said, to try to figure out if we could replace aspirin with another agent in combination with a P2Y12 inhibitor in the post-ACS setting. This is the first trial that's really taken on early aspirin. So patients who came in with ACS, STEMI, non-STEMI, and UA, uh, started on the dual antiplatelet therapy of physician choice, and then five days after that they were ran randomized to rivaroxaban versus aspirin in addition to the P2Y12 inhibitor they were on, so that was either clopidogrel to cagrelor. Okay, so important question to ask you that uh, is what dose? Because obviously, is it the European dose or is it the American dose? So the rivaroxaban dose was the low dose, 2.5 milligrams twice daily that had been studied in the ATLAS trial, and aspirin was 100 milligram uh, dosing. Okay, so low doses of both, essentially. But rivaroxaban is effective at 2.5, is it not? It has been. It's been studied in the ATLAS II trial post-ACS, showing tremendous benefit, but also with a high level of bleeding complications. So this trial, by simplifying uh, the regimen, we tried to address could we reduce the bleeding. Okay, so let's cut to the chase. What did you find? So we found that actually uh, rivaroxaban as well as aspirin had similar rates of bleeding at one year, about 5%, with not a statistical significant difference, obviously. This is a phase two trial. Other endpoints of interest is the ischemic endpoints such as CV death, MI, and stroke, and stent thrombosis, also very similar between the two arms. Importantly, we found that the stent thrombosis rate, although underpowered, recognizing that this is a phase two trial, were also similar. So this gives us encouragement for going forward. So uh, why would I want to be on rivaroxaban rather than just on aspirin and plucritabro? Well, this is the interesting thing. We have been very platelet-centric in the last several decades, but we know that the clotting cascade as well as the platelets are two important roles of causing the clot, and so we focused on one. Now we said, can we maybe put in a little bit of anticoagulation there to achieve something that actually may be slightly better, yet at the same time pacify the platelets? Okay, that assumes that aspirin is a great antiplatelet agent, doesn't it? It does, and what we showed here is that aspirin probably has more problems than we recognize from before, and the fact that rivaroxaban, which is an anticoagulant, had similar rates of bleeding suggests to me that aspirin isn't an entirely benign player. Okay, one last question, and that is 2.5 milligrams is not currently available in the United States, at least as I understand it. So is this one of the endpoints here, the hope that in fact that will be approved? Well, in order for it to be approved, I really think you need to do a larger trial to get that 2.5 milligrams approved in the United States. But what we should know is that the dose is also not used the rest of the world because of the bleeding concern along when you use it as triple therapy. Okay, so there you have it, a phase two trial, which actually gives us pretty good uh, information about a lot of things, aspirin, rivaroxaban, and the fact that, uh, for now at least, it's equivalent to a combined DAP therapy. Thank you.